Believe what? Well, did he already explain that? <laughs> I wasn't paying attention. Really? Then this is a definite candidate. Toku and Ani were having a meeting for the graduation party. You were feeling good about the coffee stand idea. Koku seemed a lot more focused today, even though she still seemed a little sad. I couldn't stop thinking about what happened at lunch. What on earth could they have been talking about? Was it something they couldn't tell me? What? Well, yeah, but... It had only been 30 minutes since we started the meeting. Is she trying to get rid of me? She's like, piss off. But we haven't even finished our meeting. But... I want to spend more time with her. I couldn't really argue with her, but still. It was almost as if Coco wanted to cut our time to go on short. Do you have plans or something? Yeah. It just seems like you're trying to get rid of me. I do feel that way, I still think that the accident was my fault. But this meeting is important too. In the end, we decided to leave things there. I wasn't sure what to say after that, Coco seemed to feel the same way. Coco certainly had a point, but I think I did too. How could there be such a distance between us? How could things have turned out so badly? All I had wanted, all I had wanted to do was talk to Nanaka about my feelings for Coco. Nanaka greeted me as energetic as always. She still had casts on her limbs, but she seemed to be doing fine. She was smiling at me. Really? It's not that early. I didn't want to tell her that Coco kicked me out of our meeting. Things have been so strange with her lately. Oh, Yanaka peered into my face. I passed it on a smile as quickly as I could. I'm not. Nothing. Wait, you're gonna leave it at that again? No, you didn't drop the subject at all. It was true. But I couldn't. I couldn't even think about conversing to Coco when things were so strange between us. And there was still no Naka to worry about. No. You don't need to do that anymore. Yeah. Awkward! But it wasn't okay. I really wanted to tell Coco how I felt. I wanted her to know my feelings. Yoshiaki-kun, just go here. Hmm? beckoned me toward her. I stood by her bed. Nanaka gently held my hand. Nanaka? Oh, I see. I could feel the warmth radiating from her hand. It was... It was really relaxing. I never thought that holding hands could comfort me so much. I realized how tired I had been lately. What? Whoops. What was she talking about? It was going to be fine. Oh, I didn't understand. And yet... Her words were like a bomb to my insecurity-ridden soul. I felt the holes in my heart begin to mend. You think so? Mm. 
Thank you, Nanaka. With that small act, Nanaka eased my conscience. dreaming of a pink Christmas. I was such a small presence in my dream and the two adults in front of me looked like huge trees. It was then that I realized they were trees. The trees were discussing something in hushed worried voices. I thought you said they were people. Are they trees or just the size of trees to you? Or I'm confused now. I tried to speak but my voice wouldn't come out so I wasn't myself in this dream. Honestly, I wouldn't be surprised. Dreams are pretty weird, usually. Then maybe I was seeing a dream from the dreamer's point of view? Not again! The first tree tilted her head in concern. Sorry, but I can't refuse it. But it's so far away. Yeah, if it becomes official, I won't be able to come back here that often. What were they talking about? I totally see who these two people are. Although they don't appear on screen, it's obvious. The conversation was probably significant to the dreamer, but it meant nothing to me. The voices seemed familiar, but the whole dream was like fog. I could barely make out their faces. It does seem like a good opportunity. Will you come with me? It would help me a lot. I must be a child. It was a dream about the dreamer's childhood. I couldn't see the speaker's face in the light. I think it's best for our family to be together. Uh, sorry for the trouble. It's okay. The great trees pressed against each other. I watched them in confusion. Suddenly the scene changed. By the way, what happened with your project? It's really strange that they've decided to reevaluate it, which means it's all going to be extended. Oh, well. Yes, we'll be able to remain this way for a while. It's a shame, but also kind of a relief. The lady sighed. The man came over to where I was standing. He kneeled down and stroked my hair. I'm sorry, I thought you'd be able to see your face every day. I'd be able to see your face every day. But someday we'll all get to live together. Please be patient, okay? <laughs> Obvious who it is. Good girl. The man smiled and stood back up at his full height. He looked like a giant tree. Well, great tree. I recognized him, but as soon as I did, I began waking up. A cloudy winter sky lay outside my window. I could see the sunlight filtering in beams through the clouds. I gazed up at the cold gray sky from my bed. I hadn't had such a strange dream in a long time. I could swear that I knew those people in a dream. Who were they? Oh, come on, do I have to spell it out to you? I don't even know the plot, and I already figured it out the second... Well, not the exact second of the dream, but... It didn't take long for me to figure out what was going on in the dream. I couldn't remember the images I saw in the dream were too blurry, too unfocused. I looked at the clock by my bed, it was almost noon. Not noon, you may went here today, it was all noon. I think I slept in too late. Should probably get up now. I dragged myself out of bed and started changing clothes. Sagra san. Ah, that's right, she's not here. She had left me a letter saying that she was going to be gone for a while. I wonder what she's doing. I hope everything's okay. Crap, the fridge is empty. The only things left the fridge were various scunnivants. My stockpile of instant food was exhausted too. Ah, I forgot to go to the grocery store. What should I do? I know, I just go to the grocery store. Coco's face appeared in my mind. We're going to cook her! No, I could call Cook over. I could say it was for the committee. And then we could go to the shop next week and get some to eat. Or maybe, maybe she offered to cook for me. I called her cell as soon as the idea struck. We've been having some awkward moments together lately. This could be our chance to bridge the gap. You have reached the voice from mailbox for... Huh? It went to voicemail. I waited a couple of minutes and called her again. However, after several rings, I was connected to her voicemail again. 
Maybe I should try her at home. Phone eagerly in hand, I dialed the number for Coco's home phone. I was on edge as I heard the f ringtone. Huh? You got the answering machine. I guess nobody was home. Coco must have gone out somewhere. I tried calling her mobile again. Whatever it still dropped me to voicemail. Hmm, well, this isn't working out very well. Spending all that NG had made me even hungrier. I had no choice. I would have to go shopping. Well, you'll probably run into her, I imagine. I grabbed some fast food in the shopping district to sell my store. Let's see, I need to go to the grocery store now. Started walking towards the supermarket. On my way, I saw a sign for Mitsukuchi Hospital. I may as well visit Monaco while I'm out. Probably running. Uh, nope. Okay, Coco isn't here then. Hello. Man, my legs. Yuzu Chan ran up to me and hugged my legs. <laughs> Talks about his legs while I'm just like, ah, my legs. Just like, get off my legs! But no, it's just like the awkward way I sit. Stretched legs, man. I mean, it's... I say this quite a number of times, but I've got a desk in my room. I never use it. I just always sit and awkwardly legs crossed. Instead of just going to the desk with the laptop and just record it that way. It's not like I need to, like, keep a certain amount of distance between me and the laptop. Because the, I'm currently still using the built-in one, so it doesn't matter how I sit, really. It has, but it w I was here yesterday, too. Your dad? Really? Oh, what? Hmm. Were they... wait... You... I don't... I didn't hear you actually say that. And wouldn't that be like subject to just like, Hey, you can't use actual other kind of series in this. That's usually like whenever you see an anime or anything like or a manga that references a different series, they usually just go, it's just like, and then uh, all that, and just kind of censor that one line. They make it obvious what they're referencing, but they don't actually say it. Unless it's something like Gintama, for example, where it's actually allowed to do quite a bit of that. But usually it's just like that. Naka smiled as she showed me her sketchbook. Oh my god. I saw a scary picture of a half-melted cat. This is Doraemon? I could never draw anything that bad even if I used my left hand. It's scary. Yuzu-chan showed me a jumbled up black thing. Doraemon... what fire and got burnt? They're both horrible. Is that a challenge? I haven't drawn in quite some time, I'll have you know. And I can't be asked. What? She handed me the sketchbook and some colored pencils. Um, let me think. Hmm. Depending on, uh, well, this will be like... Where it'd be split off into all parts, maybe I will give it a try and actually draw that character. I don't even know anything about that character. I just know of its existence, what it looks like, and that's about it. I think it was like this. Was he like this? I showed them the picture I drew. Oh, 
But this is what the ribbon looks like. What? Shocked. Okay, what's our next subject? Okay. I got it. We drew a lot of pictures. Is this Barney the dinosaur an entirely different Barney we're dealing with? Naka's room seems strangely quiet after Yuzu-chan left. <sighs> we drew a lot. Cool. That's not true. I think this Batman turned out pretty good. Don't be mean. Damn it. I should pay attention to what manga characters and stuff look like from now on. Batman's not a manga character, though. Huh? I can press the button to call for the nurse. What's the matter? I'll help you if you need something. I could turn bright red and reject my offer. It's fine, don't worry, I'll help. Naka? She stared at me, her eyes full of tears. What? Hi, Shirakawa-san, do you need to go to the bathroom? Well, he didn't know, did he? Sorry. Uh, I forgot that she needs to use the loo every once in a while. What a dunce I am. Why didn't I get it right away? But... Naka was cute when she was shy. I didn't get to see her like that very often. Ugh. I'm so exhausted. I wonder if I've caught a cold. No, I'm hungry. If I have an appetite, I can't be sick. To wake up and eat. I didn't have any plans for the day. I could eat up and then take it easy. <laughs> Sarah? I shut up as I heard someone's voice. So he'd be like, Sarah? Oh, I was just thinking of that delightful glare, and there it is. I opened my eyes in terror and saw Yumi's cold eyes staring down at me. <laughs> Yume sighed as she looked down on me from above. You all want to talk about being lazy? <laughs> She thought she was better than me just because she woke up earlier than I did. Hey, some people are night people, man. Huh? By the way, you came to wake me up? Mm. When did you get here? Mm -hmm. Hmm. Does that mean you've just been sitting in my room for half an hour? That's funny, I was already half awake, but I didn't remember making any effort to wake me up. I wondered how hard she really tried. Nothing. Do I have to glare at you some more? Huh? You know what? Nah, actually, she's not using the glare face right now. You may chan handed me a package wrapped in fancy paper. There was even a pink ribbon around it. The heck? What's this girly stuff? Uh, get well soon, present? Shirakawa-san, 
Oh, that's right, uh, sorry I didn't tell you. How the heck did it take her that long to know about? Surely it must have gone around rumors at least. I mean, the school, one of the most popular girls, at least with the guys anyway, and the entire school gets hit by a car, ends up in hospital, and somehow it doesn't circulate around the entire school, or at least most of it. Yeah. I mean. Yeah, but I think it'll mean more if you give it to her yourself. Whoops, what the hell does that mean? It's true that I was going there anyway, but... I get well soon present, huh? It's good manners to bring something when you're visiting hospital, huh? I've been uh, going there empty handed. <sighs> There's that glare, there's that glare, that perfect glare. Now I can put Mr. Squash to the right, in editing of course, that I drew for the Project Diva FLP that I still am going around to uploading because I still haven't bothered to make a trailer for it or anything so it can't be asked just yet. But one of the images for him I made for it, I based the eyes around this face here. So yeah. Inspired by a glare to create a glare for an entirely different character. Hey, I just forgot about it, okay? Don't be that way. I wouldn't do that. That wrapping paper is too girly for me anyway. All right. She gave me one last glare, of course, before leaving the room. Hmm. I get well soon present. I'd never even considered it. The knock I must have thought it was, thought I was awful. Yeah, that's it. Today I'll buy a get well soon present from the knocker. I got dressed to eat a light meal and headed towards the shopping district. It was a weekend, so what the hell was her problem? Just like, wake up, you lazy bastard, it's the weekend. That's the time when nobody gives a shit. Just like, they either go out, or they stay in and say, ah, oh, screw it, I'm gonna sleep in. Busy weeks, you know, screw it, I'm going to sleep. So the shopping district was crowded, and there were still some stands set up, too. Can't just get her a gift from the stands, though. I should get her something a little more proper. A box of sweets, maybe? Mm, no, that's a little too proper. Something just as delicious, but a little more casual. What about all different kinds of food? I think the knocker's favorite pastry shop is around here somewhere. I stole down a narrow, underpopulated side street. Ha, huh? could it be? Yes, it is! It was Koko and Mataru. They were walking in front of the convictory of failing to pronounce. Mataru was acting bashfully, but Koko's eyes were fixed on the ground. What were they doing there all alone together? It couldn't be. Let's just have some business in the shopping district. Was there another reason they could be walking together? I could only think of one. I didn't want to think about it, let alone acknowledge the possibility. They were both in the music club, there were plenty of reasons why they might want to see each other outside of school. You know, if this is just a simple misunderstanding, you've gotta be just like, you gotta have some good reason for it, you know? Because really, cut off all contact with him, make him suspicious. If they're doing this deliberately to make him suspicious, just to like pull it around, it's like, oh no, it's nothing like that. Just like, what the hell do you do that for then? 
and I just happened to stumble upon them while they were out. <laughs> Why were they acting so shy? Why was Coco laughing like that? My heart started to itch. Well, that's different. It usually aches, but it itches now. Could they be... Coco? I unconsciously started following them. Coco and Wataro entered into a quiet area of Sakura Park. They wandered slowly down the footpath. I couldn't hear what they were talking about. Every once in a while they burst out laughing. Where were they headed? But more importantly, what the hell am I doing? I'm sneaking along behind them like a damn stalker is what? Why didn't I just call out to them? You know, the way I always did. But I knew the reason. It was because they were acting so intimately. Oh, they both stopped. I also stomped and hid so I could watch what was going on. They stood right in front of a large cherry blossom tree, gazing into each other's eyes. What are they doing? What's with this romantic mood? Stop it. This isn't a romantic mood. This is more of a... This is sad. Kind of mood. It's like... It, now you sure you can realize it's like... From what is understanding, they are a couple. And he's like, But I love her. Oh, my heart. Now we know how Wataro would feel. Otherwise, I'm going to have to admit what I don't want to admit. <laughs> I could see Coco trembling from behind. She put her arms around Wataru. What? Coco and Matara were holding each other? What? What was going on? Was I dreaming again? Well, she doesn't seem happy about it. She seems pretty forced, if you ask me, but it wasn't a dream. They were embracing each other like a scene out of a romance movie. The cherry blossoms swirled around them dramatically. My heart was crushed. Something screamed inside of me. It slammed me across the head and crushed my heart. What was I doing here? All the way out here. Spying on them as they consummated their love. What an 